So my very first video nearly three years ago was on this subject, and I have waited patiently for the Come Follow Me curriculum to get to the end of the New Testament year where I could expand on this topic. This is one of my very favorite topics I have ever done a video on. One of the ways that I feel the Spirit is when I look at the night sky and I see the heavens and get a glimpse of God's creations. God wants us to look at the heavens. I love Jeremiah 10 too, which says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. But what are the signs of heaven? The most celebrated sign in the heavens is the star of Bethlehem that led the wise men to the Savior. We don't give that story a second thought, but yet most of us don't look for signs in that way, even though we are specifically told to in the scriptures. Yet in 2011, a man by the name of William Tapley, a professor and writer, and a doppelganger for my mean Uncle Tom, published a video about an alignment in the stars that he believed was a literal fulfillment of what is described in Revelations 12 verses 1 and 2. Many people agreed and expounded upon what they believed this sign means. But if this is your first time hearing about this, let's make sure we're all on the same page. John the Revelator, in the twelfth chapter of the book of Revelation, talks about some of the events that will happen prior to the second coming of the Savior. Part of this revelation is seeing a war in heaven, and how it continues on the earth today. But let's start at the beginning, which says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. These verses have captured the imagination of artists, philosophers, scholars, and countless others throughout time. These are just a few of the artist's renderings of those two verses. There are statues all over the world from hundreds and hundreds of years ago, all illustrating these verses. Why is everyone so focused on these verses? Well, they describe events of the last days. Knowing when this event will occur can lead one to a better understanding and an idea of the other signs of the times and getting prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. According to Tapley, he believed that these verses spoke of an alignment in the stars that uniquely would appear on September 23, 2017. William Tapley's discovery went viral, and since then there have been countless books, videos, blog posts, and infographics posted online with various interpretations and explanations. Some people thought when September 23, 2017 arrived, it would be the beginning of the millennium. Some thought it would be the second coming. Some thought it was the beginning of end times, or the end of the half hour of silence, also spoken about in the book of Revelation, and many other interpretations. To be clear, I didn't discover this alignment, but I believe I did make a discovery that I believe tells us exactly what is meant by the sign. But as always, I give you the information and you can decide for yourself what you think is right. I want to take a moment and look at the meaning of a couple of these words in Greek. First, a sign, meaning an indication, mark, or a token. It is Bible Concordances number 4592. Simeon, a sign, typically miraculous, given especially to confirm, corroborate, or authenticate. Accordingly, it is used dozens of times in the New Testament for what authenticates the Lord and His eternal purpose. Especially by doing what mere man cannot replicate of, take credit for. The word heaven refers to the visible heavens, the atmosphere, the sky, or the starry heavens or spiritual heavens. So to have a sign in the heavens strongly suggests a configuration of the stars and other heavenly bodies such as the sun, moon, and planets. Revelation 12 describes a woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet. Charles and now many, many others believe this is the constellation Virgo, where in much of the month of September it appears that the sun is part of her clothing. Also, on a specific day each year in September, the moon is at her feet. Verse 1 in Revelation 12 also describes that upon her head she has a crown of 12 stars. As you can see, the constellation of Leo the Lion is above her head. Leo has 9 stars in it. So how can she have 12 stars like Revelation describes? Well, once every year and a half or so, you can find three of the planets from our solar system near the top of Virgo's head or around Leo. When this occurs, the woman has a crown of 12 stars. That in of itself is quite rare because while having three planets in that specific area of the sky at the same time happens every year and a half or so, having that correspond with the same time that the sun is in Virgo in September and when the moon is under her feet is really quite rare. 
It gets very interesting when you consider what happens with Jupiter and what is described in verse 2. It says, quote, And she being with child, cried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. So the woman is pregnant. It just so happens that Jupiter every 83 years goes into what is called the retrograde of Jupiter, which makes it look like the planet oscillates inside Virgo's belly for just over nine months, the same amount of time it takes for a baby to gestate. The retrograde of Jupiter happens due to how Jupiter looks, being a moving planet, but being seen from another moving planet, which is Earth. When you combine this phenomenon of Jupiter combined with the Sun, Moon, and the three planets, this is a very, very rare phenomenon and closely matches the description from Revelation 12. Some people might think all of this is a stretch, but then we go into verse 3 of Revelation 12, quote, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Some people discount this entire explanation because there is no dragon constellation near Virgo. The constellation Draco is a ways away, and the planets don't orbit anywhere near there. As I looked at the Bible concordance, at the translation of the word dragon, I realized that more often than not, it can also be interpreted as serpent. And there is a serpent just below Virgo, right where Jupiter exits, representing the baby. In fact, all throughout the Bible, dragon, serpent, and even Leviathan are all interchangeable. Look at this single verse in Isaiah where all three terms are used describing the same thing. And again, you can see how the interpretation from Hebrew can be a serpent. And is it all that surprising? As we see in a few verses, this is describing Satan. And how did Satan appear to Eve in the Garden of Eden? As a serpent. The serpent just below the constellation of Virgo is called Serpens. Serpens is a two-part constellation. It is the only constellation that is broken into two parts. Serpens caput, which is Latin for head of the serpent, which is here, and there is Serpens cauda, Latin for tail of the serpent, which is here. It is divided by the Ophiuchus constellation, where his left hand holds the serpent. While Serpens has always been considered to have two parts, throughout time and even now, some people associate some of the stars from Ophiuchus constellation to Serpens. In Revelation 12, John describes the serpent as having seven heads and ten horns. It is interesting that this one constellation that is broken up has seven stars on its head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, while the tail has ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some might say that there aren't seven heads, but we can see that there are seven stars. But snakes don't have horns, so how do you associate the tail with ten horns? Well, the translation of the word head can have several meanings, including lord or ruler. The word horn can have alternate meanings, including it being a symbol of power. Biblical numerology would suggest there is a deeper meaning with the number 7 and 10 as well. 7 meaning complete or perfect, and 10 is a bit trickier because it depends on the context. If it's in the context of something good, then it can mean God's laws and commandments, like the 10 commandments. When it's in the context of something wicked, it can mean something very evil and powerful, such as the 10 plagues of Egypt. Combining this imagery would suggest that when this event happens, that the serpent, meaning Satan, is at his most complete or is at his strongest. But it also said that it was a red dragon, or serpent. You can see from these pictures that some of the brightest stars in the constellation appear red or orange, including the Alpha Serpens, which is a red giant star, as well as the famous Red Square Nebula. You can see the famous Pillars of Creation of the Eagle Nebula inside of the Serpens constellation. The James Webb Telescope has allowed us to see this area of the stars as never before. But what about the seven crowns upon his head in verse 3? Look at what is just above the serpent's head. Corona Borealis is another constellation that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars upon his head. In other words, a crown with seven stars. Think about how God would try to give us a sign that maps to a specific day. How specific that would need to be. How it would have to transcend language, time, geography, and human nature. I find this explanation of the first few verses of Revelation 12 very compelling. The problem is, the way we have interpreted it isn't entirely correct. Keep in mind that there are only nine planets in the solar system. Now, we aren't going to get into a debate about Pluto. 
even though we can't see it with the human eye anyway. We are on the Earth, so Earth doesn't count, and Jupiter is the planet that is exiting Virgo. Neptune is too dim to see with the naked eye, which leaves only five planets, of which three of them have to be in nearly the same position at the same time. That is quite rare. On any given day, there is only a 1 in 250 chance of that happening. Then combine that with Virgo being clothed in the sun, meaning it is around September, which is a 1 in 12 chance. Then within that month, the moon has to be just under Virgo's feet, which happens 1 in 28. Then add how often Jupiter is exiting Virgo after oscillating there for 9 months. That happens 1 month every 83 years. Combine them all together and it makes these verses in Revelation 12 and the odds of all of this happening on any given day is approximately 1 out of 85 million. Ever since the discovery of the alignment of planets, stars, and the moon, people have been trying to map it to dates on the calendar. Some try to force it to what they want, and sometimes it can even appear close. Others believe it happens more frequently than I just explained. However, there are always something that keeps it from being a perfect match. I have listed the reasons next to each one, but with each of these, some are ignoring the moon's position, or some of the planets are too low or too high, etc. When you carefully take the specific requirements, it only has happened twice since John the Revelator wrote the book of Revelation nearly 2,000 years ago. And don't take my word for it. Download the Stellarium software for free, plug in the dates, and look for yourself. But yes, you heard me right, it has happened twice in 2,000 years. It has been several years since 2017, but that is when this was made famous. But there was another occurrence. Interestingly, both occurrences happened on the same calendar day. In 2017, September 23rd, the sign was manifest in the heavens. September 22nd is the first day of the new year, the last day of Rosh Hashanah. September 21st ended the 5,777th year on the Jewish calendar, the last day of Elul. And September 20 is the beginning of Rosh Hashan. I'll explain in a minute why this special Jewish holiday is important to our understanding of Revelation 12. But it is very unusual that not only does this astrological event fall on the same calendar day of the month in these two different years, but they are also on the same Jewish holiday dates, as Rosh Hashan can land anywhere from late August to early October. The other year this took place was 1827. Be aware that the three planets aren't in the exact same spot as 2017. In 2017, they are more in Leo, and in 1827, two of the three are around Virgo's head. I believe that everyone has been so focused on the sign happening in 2017 that no one stopped and thought about what happened on this date in 1827. So what did happen? Now I need to pause here for two reasons. First, when I created an original video on this topic a few years ago, several people gave the feedback that they didn't think that some of the planets were in position that they would call a crown on Virgo's head. I'd like to address that here. Specifically, they thought that Mercury and Venus were too low because the rest of the stars and Mars were above the head of Virgo. Some even said that Jupiter wasn't even in Virgo's belly. And to this, you might say, yeah, they're right. But that is because they are looking at the cartoon artwork available in the software rather than the constellation stars themselves. When you add the stars themselves, you can see, for example, that Jupiter is in fact in retrograde and about to exit Virgo. Now removing this graphic entirely, you can better see where Virgo's head would be. Not based on the graphic, but the actual constellation itself the head would probably be better represented here based on the constellation itself, and then you can see the stars are very appropriately placed as a crown on her head. As I said before, this is one of two matches of this configuration in the last 2,000 years. So when looking at this, be sure to not just look at the cartoon graphic or you're going to be thrown off, but look at the actual constellation and the stars themselves. The second reason I need to pause is when I unveiled what happened on September 22nd, 1827, several comments were essentially, Kevin, you had me, but I just don't believe your conclusions. So before I tell you, I would ask you to pause, and if you think that there is merit to this explanation, and again, I encourage you to do all your own research, but if you are right now thinking, hey, he may be onto something, 
then I would ask you to open your heart and mind to the actual events that happened on September 23rd, 1827. Remember, this is written in the book of Revelation as a sign of the times and a sure sign that God, through the prophet John the Revelator, that he is giving this to you. And he's giving it to you personally so that you would know of the big events that kicked off on this very day in history. He designed this sign as a way for you to know what was going to happen as we are led up to the second coming of our Savior. Think of this sign as one for you individually. September 22nd, 1827 is the day that, after four years of waiting, the angel Moroni allowed Joseph Smith to get the gold plates from the hill Cumorah. The very next day, the sign is manifest in the heavens. Coincidence? Not when you read through the rest of Revelation 12. Let's skip to verse 5 for a moment. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Many Christians believe that this verse is referring to God bringing forth the kingdom of God in the last days. But it also mentions a rod of iron. A rod of iron is an interesting choice of words. The exact same words are used in Lehi's dream in 1 Nephi 11.25 in the Book of Mormon to describe the word of God. Verse 5 is talking about the gold plates coming forth as part of God's church on earth. In other words, the sign in Revelation 12 is to mark the time when the word of God becomes available through God's soon-to-be-restored church. This is the event that John the Revelator, who saw the end times, wanted us to know about. The symbolism in the stars and what happened in 1827 combined with the rarity of the alignment is far more than coincidence and I hope we can all have an open mind to what it can mean for all of us. Now if you are one of those people that just said, wow, you had me until you said Joseph Smith, let me tell you that you probably don't really understand that story. There is so much misinformation online that you can't possibly come to know the truth that way. I would encourage you to find a faithful member of the church and ask them to tell you the real story or contact the church to have missionaries come by and talk to you. Because what if this is all true? What does the bringing forth of the kingdom of God and the rod of iron mean? It isn't coincidence that the very day Joseph Smith received the plates is on the day when the Jews throughout the world celebrate the symbolic beginning of the gathering of Israel. That is one of the purposes for the kingdom of God is to gather the righteous saints in the last days. In a great Enzyme article from 2000, it says, quote, Regarding the first day of the Jewish New Year, the last day of Rosh Hashanah, this feast was ripe with meaning for the theme of the gathering of Israel. It is unlikely this timing was accidental. Indeed, young Joseph was asked to meet Moroni for four years in preparation for this significant day in 1827. It signifies the beginning of Israel's final harvest, the day God has set to remember his ancient promises to regather Israel, a time for new revelation that would lead to a new covenant with Israel and a time to prepare for the millennium. The article talks about the beginning of Israel's final harvest. It says, quote, The Book of Mormon is the major instrument the Lord prepared to initiate his final harvest. Therefore, it is significant that the golden plates were received on the 22nd of September, 1827. Coinciding with the beginning of Israel's fall gathering and symbolizing the onset of its final harvest of souls. What no one has contemplated before now is that Revelation 12 was also describing this event in detail. There's a lot more Jewish history tied into this exact date, and it is all explained in that article. Some of it goes back so far as to the Exodus and the Israelites leaving Egypt. And it's all about how this holiday represents when God will make a new covenant with his people and how it represents a time to prepare for the millennium. Let's reread those verses in Revelation 12 again, but this time, let's use the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. Joseph made many significant changes to this chapter, and it isn't surprising that anyone attempting to understand those verses without the Joseph Smith translation would struggle. What I have done here is use the strike-through function for anything Joseph Smith removed, so you can see what was removed and words in red have been added by the prophet. Additionally, some verses have been reordered by the prophet, which also makes a huge difference. If you don't have a full copy of the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, I highly suggest you get one. You can buy it on Amazon. It is published by the Community of Christ Church, but has been validated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to be authentic. 
Look at the first verse and what Joseph changed. And there appeared a great sign in heaven, in the likeness of the things on the earth. He is talking about constellations, a sign in the heaven in the likeness of things on the earth, like a woman, a serpent, a lion, and a crown. It is clear this is a celestial sign. Notice verse 5 has been moved to verse 3, which makes a difference. But then look at verse 7, because this tells us exactly who the woman and the child are. Quote, and the dragon prevailed not against Michael, neither the child nor the woman, which was the church of God, who had been delivered of her pains and brought forth the kingdom of our God and his Christ. So the woman is the church of God and the child is the kingdom of God. Now the distinction there is for another video, but we aren't talking about Christ and his second coming. We are talking about the restoration of the church, the priesthood, and the temple covenants. You can see how with the regular translation of the Bible, how people would become so confused about who the woman is and the child, etc. Now with the Joseph Smith translation, you see that Satan is at the height of his power, waiting for the church to be restored so he can destroy it. Those familiar with church history know just how real and destructive those attempts were. This and many other events exactly fulfill the prophecy of John the Revelator. I went into more detail on this specifically on the original video if you want to watch that, including further clarification on what the scriptures and Joseph Smith said about the second coming of the Lord. Some have asked, well, if 1827 was the fulfillment of Revelation 12, then what is the significance of the same sign happening in 2017? I have my hunches, but I'll leave that to you to explore further. If you agree with this analysis of Revelation 12 and the correlation to the events in 1827, then I would encourage you to study early church history and what happened, especially as it pertains to Satan's early attempts to destroy the church and early apostasy in the church. Then I would compare it to the events happening now, especially from right around 2017 and ongoing in those same categories. You might be surprised how much history repeats itself. I would also encourage you to read the quotes by the prophet Russell M. Nelson, especially during general conference over the past several years while he has been prophet. There's no doubt that these are the last days and that John the Revelator revealed a sign of the times to help us know when God's kingdom would be restored to the earth and how we can learn the truths of his gospel. I hope you have found this video to be helpful, and if you have, I would appreciate it if you would share with others. But even if you don't share the video, if you would like and subscribe, it promotes the YouTube algorithm to show the video to more people. So thank you in advance for helping to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching.